I had coffee with my friend the other day, uh, an old chap uh, in his 60s, and he told me that he will never buy a Chinese branded vehicle. Now in that same conversation, he also told me that his next vehicle is an electric car. Now for people like my friend who wants a value price EV but doesn't want to go Chinese, well their only option at least here in the Philippines is this, the Nissan Leaf. Now in this video, we're going to find out what the Nissan Leaf can give and what it can't. Let's do this. In the world of electric cars, the Nissan Leaf can be considered as the OG. What the Prius did for hybrids, the Nissan Leaf did for EVs. You see, the Nissan Leaf was the best-selling electric car of all time until the Tesla Model 3 surpassed it in early 2020. Come mid-2021, Nissan Philippines decided to bring in the second-generation Leaf, knowing that Filipinos will soon embrace electrified vehicles. But with an asking price of 2,798,000 Philippine pesos, can the Nissan LEAF hold its own against other value EVs, especially those from Chinese car makers? Let's find out! Here at Reagan's Rides, we do car reviews of SUVs, sports cars, trucks, and everything in between. So subscribe and hit the bell! If you're like my friend, who is a dual citizen, uh, yeah, meaning he's a Filipino and a senior, okay? And you want to drive an EV, an electric vehicle, then yeah, the Nissan Leaf is really your only option, uh, at least here in the Philippines. Now, I mentioned to him that uh, Kia and Hyundai also have their own EVs in the form of the EV6 and the Ionic 5. Uh, but when he found out the price that it's over 3 million Philippine pesos, yeah, let's just say that it's a little bit too rich for his blood. Now that just leaves this, uh, well, Nissan Leaf as his only option. Of course, he had uh, concerns about the Leaf. I mean, well, electric vehicles in general. Like, uh, for example, the battery life. I mean, apparently, <laughs> apparently most people think uh, that an EV's battery will only last as long as a regular 12 volt car battery or even let's say the battery of a cell phone. I mean, dude, nothing can be further from the truth. You see, the Leaf has been around since 2010, so that's around 13 years already. And uh, back in 2019, uh, Nissan studied all of the Leafs that they, well, Leafs, Leafs? Is it Leafs or Nissan Leaves? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they studied the battery life of the Nissan Leaf and it turns out that the battery pack of this vehicle can last up to 22 years. 22 freaking years, dude! I mean, do you know anybody who keeps their cars for 22 years? <laughs> and uh, wag kang pilosopo, ha? we're not talking about collectible cars here. I mean, this is a regular city commuter car. So when it comes to battery life, yeah, dude, it's not an issue. It's not an issue at all. Now, another one of his concerns is, well, maintenance. Uh, but just like other EVs out there, the Leaf does not need gasoline and you don't need to put motor oil into it. So maintenance cost is actually lower than an internal combustion engine vehicle since you only have to maintain the tires, the brakes, and the suspension uh, throughout the life of the vehicle. Then there's the reliability question. I mean, most people think that EVs are not reliable. Well, dude, put it this way. As I said, the Nissan Leaf has been around for 13 years now, and there have been no reports of Nissan Leafs, I mean, Nissan Leaf, uh, breaking down on their owners. The 110 kilowatt uh, motor that we have here has lesser moving parts, making it more reliable than uh, a vehicle with an internal combustion engine. The power is also adequate at 148 horsepower and 320 newton meters of torque, making this Leaf a peppy performer around the city. I mean, that torque 
it's instantly available dude and I'll show you whoa okay see it's not gonna put you back into your seat but it is so much fun and it can make you know traffic light drag races a lot of fun as well <laughs> I mean I really love that instant torque delivery that all of these electric vehicles are giving the thing is though, we only get a standard 40 um, kilowatt uh, hour battery pack here. Uh, so that means that uh, yeah, the range isn't really as good as you'd want. As, uh, well, as good as the newer EVs out there. I mean, um, Nissan Philippines quotes it at 311 um, uh, kilometers. Uh, but honestly, dude, yeah, I'm, look, I'm getting close, something closer to around 240, 250 kilometers uh, worth of range. So yeah, it's, it's okay, uh, but it's not really that good compared to the newer EVs out there. Uh, of course, uh, Nissan has a, you know, a bigger battery pack for, the, for more range, but that's not available here in the Philippines, unfortunately. It's uh, only the standard battery pack that we get here. Now that standard range of the Nissan Leaf is, uh, is perfectly decent if you're still living in 2018. The thing is, there are newer EVs nowadays that have a, a range of over 400 kilometers, uh, some even over 500 kilometers on a single charge. So comparing the LEAF to those newer EVs, yeah, the range of the standard LEAF is a bit lagging behind. Now, that's not a big issue if you're mostly driving around the city, uh, but you will have to carefully plan a long distance drive. Uh, the thing is, we are, well, we are filming this on location here in Tagaytay, so a drive from Makati to Tagaytay is not gonna be a big issue. Now, as for the charging port, well, we have that right here on the nose of the leaf. We have a pair of uh, charging uh, outlets there, a DC and AC charge port, and it's located right in the middle of these sleek halogen headlights with LED DRLs. Now, I find it kind of weird that the Nissan LEAF still has halogen headlights because a set of LED headlights would have, uh, yeah, would have to draw lesser power from the battery. So, yeah, I believe the reason why we have halogen headlights here is, well, the fact that this is an older platform. Now, some of you will ask me, like, how long does it take to charge the Nissan LEAF from empty? Uh, well, dude, if you're using a regular wall socket charger like this, then you're looking at upwards of 15 hours. Uh, the thing is, most LEAF owners wouldn't let their vehicles reach empty anyway, and uh, most of them would likely be topping up the, the LEAF every night when they come home from work. So yeah, I don't see that as a big issue. Now, Nissan Philippines also offers an optional uh, fast charging wall box charger that they can install in your homes for an added fee. Uh, now, as for the design itself of the second generation LEAF, well, this vehicle now looks more like a normal and modern car, unlike the first generation, which kind of reminded me of a frog, uh, to be perfectly honest. Now, this vehicle, as I said, looks modern, and in fact, it even looks edgy, and uh, I like it. I like this design especially when you get it in this magnetic blue paint job uh, that goes well with that uh, blacked out roof. Okay, nice and windy out here in Tagaytay. Anyway guys, the unfortunate thing here is the interior of the Nissan Leaf is not as edgy as the outside. See, this my friends is a very budget cabin with fabric seats and hard plastics all around. It's not really a deal breaker though, uh, but if you start comparing it to the cabins of the newer electric vehicles in the market now, then things are not really looking good for the Nissan LEAF. You see, I was initially bummed out by the fact that we don't get an electronic park brake button here. Uh, instead, we just have a regular foot brake but dude, as it turns out, when I was driving this vehicle, you don't really need an electronic park brake because we already have that e-pedal toggle switch right there, which acts like an electronic park brake with an auto-hold feature. Now, that's been my experience 
when I when I've been driving the Nissan Leaf for the past week, uh, the interior itself, the cabin materials won't wow you. You know, it won't it won't give you that nice and warm feeling. But the Nissan Leaf, yeah, delivers in all of the important areas. Like uh, take that e-pedal button for example. When you toggle it in e-pedal mode then you enable one pedal driving which gives me a totally relaxing drive especially when I'm driving around a traffic jam uh, or let's say the 8 inch touchscreen infotainment system here I mean at 8 inches yeah the touchscreen is a bit on the smaller side especially in today's times but it still delivers Apple CarPlay Android Auto and the image of the around view monitor which is Nissan's way of uh, talking about a 360 degree view camera. You see, the Nissan Leafs cabin kept things simple. You know, everything here is simple and straightforward, which is a welcome approach for a lot of people. Although if you're paying uh, close to 2.8 million Philippine pesos for a vehicle, yeah, this cabin is really not something uh, that you would expect. See, you don't have to fiddle around too much when you start driving the Leaf. Everything is within reach and there are physical buttons for all of the vital drive systems. You know, just put it on drive and go. Uh, the thing is, some people get a little bit put off by this hockey puck style shifter but yeah, you get the hang of it after a while. Now, if you're in traffic, you should toggle B mode and enable the e-pedal, uh, which should make it a lot more convenient for you to drive in stop and go traffic. Uh, but once things open up, like what we have now, you, you should turn off the e-pedal and you can use all of the 320 Newton meters of torque on the highway and uh, have a little bit of fun. But of course, when you're having fun, then yes, the, the battery juice will run out faster. Now, the thing is, dude, yeah, my point here is the Nissan Leaf is simple and straightforward to drive. Visibility is also really good with a large and wide open windshield here as well as large front windows. In fact, yeah, I get a, a minivan feel here in terms of visibility and I mean, I guess that's applicable to most hatchbacks out there. Now, as for the safety features, this Nissan Leaf gets uh, the intelligent mobility system, which is enough to secure five stars in the Euro NCAP safety rating. Uh, of course, well, the Leaf also gets the perks of an EV, uh, such as uh, number coding exemption until the year 2030. Uh, you could also park at the charging stations in the malls, and you also get full discounts. Uh, when it comes to registration fees. Now as for the cargo space, well the Nissan Leaf gives back a decent 435 liters of cargo space here which is good enough for a pair of medium-sized luggage. Now this cargo co compartment is also pretty deep because the spare tire can be found underneath the car uh, which kind of surprised me because it's pretty similar to a crossover on an SUV considering that this is a compact hatchback. Now as for the, the back seat space, well, it is uh, average for a compact hatchback, uh, which means that uh, three average Asian dudes should fit at the back seat. Uh, but if you're looking for comfort, well, it's best to just keep it at two passengers. At first glance, the second generation Nissan Leaf does not seem as appetizing as the newer EV offerings given its limited range, budget cabin, and that steep asking price. It may be the first EV for the masses, but the Nissan Leaf did not evolve much to keep up with the newer EV contenders. But then, there are people out there who want an EV that has a proven track record as well as the support of a strong Japanese brand. The same people also prefer not to spend over 3 million Philippine pesos, so this Nissan Leaf is the perfect EV for them. At least until Nissan unveils the rumored Leaf EV crossover. But until then, uh, the Nissan Leaf 
is here to stay. Thanks for watching.